Speaking with 3rd District Congressman Adrian Smith on this Friday before Memorial Day. He's here after the uh, Memorial Day recess uh, began earlier this week. So uh, now you get how long a break now? Well, I'll be around Nebraska all week. All week. uh, All all next week, I guess. Got in late last night, and it's great to be home. Yeah, I'll bet it is. Um, Before you guys left, you were debating the uh, Zika virus funding. And uh, apparently there's no agreement yet on on that particular funding. Kind of explain uh, what your position is on that. Well, I, you know, I'm willing to look at uh, utilizing some federal funding. Now, I think we need to be careful about what those levels are, what, what's most appropriate, what's most effective. And uh, there are patterns of spending in the past on, <clears throat> on good topics, on things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that need to be addressed. But that doesn't mean that, you know, just any level of funding uh, is, is the most appropriate. I, I think that we need to really target the, those funds and make sure that are spent wisely and effectively. All right. So how much uh, would you like to see spent compared to what the Obama administration wants? Well, I know the Democrats are saying that the Republicans aren't spending enough. And I, I think we need more information than uh, to support their their case. Um, you know, I'm concerned about uh, this this overall situation, but again, we we just need to be very careful in how we spend those dollars. So, when you guys get back, do you think uh, you guys will come to some kind of an agreement? Obviously, we need to have some funding in place to try to combat this this virus. That you, you almost kind of wonder whether the athletes even need to be going over there. Well, that's uh, that's a huge concern, like you know, like you mentioned with the Olympics and uh, just. Uh, international travel in general and so as we sift through uh, the issues and the information and and uh, my, uh, my colleagues and myself we're around constituents you know getting feedback uh, I think that can be helpful moving forward as well all right uh, international travel uh, that was one of the things I had mentioned here but now that you brought it up uh, how how serious do you think the situation is with international travel especially over in Europe with the plane disappearing and all the other things that have happened in the last year. I mean, uh, um, how how difficult is it to to go overseas? Well, I <clears throat> I think it uh, it's advisable to to uh, still travel. I don't want to overreact uh, with uh, some of the uh, situations that have happened, uh, but I, we need to be vigilant as a country. Uh, we've got uh, U.S. Uh, State Department personnel around the world to uh, give us feedback on what is safe, what is not. I mean, there certainly are places uh, that are not safe, and, and we should be careful uh, with those. But uh, to just uh, say that all international travel uh, should be postponed, um, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I, I think there's still many opportunities for folks to uh, uh, travel and engage around the world. Okay. All right, Pen Air. How happy are you now that that's official? <laughs> well, I'm I'm very excited that that's official. That uh, uh, we'll see a new provider come in with uh, I think some new and fresh ideas and approaches. And uh, from what I'm told, uh, they offer a great service. So I'm anxious uh, to to see that happen. Yeah, I think a lot of people around here are are very excited about it. It's, it's not only for us, but North Platte and Kearney as well, and even a couple of Kansas communities and. Um, one would think if if they're as reliable as as their history indicates, mm-hmm. we could get a huge economic benefit mm-hmm. from this. No, I I agree. I think uh, their record speaks for itself, and they've they've got you know not just Alaska but some California routes and some routes in the Northeast. In addition to this, so that this is this is they're not new to the business. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, the flooding that's going on around here and around. Uh, uh, any communities are along the North Platte River, probably in, in in central Nebraska as well. Maybe not quite as much as here, but uh, how close are you monitoring it? And if we did have issues, what would the federal government be able to do, if anything? Well, that, that's why we w- want to stay on top of this, so that we aren't left with a reactive measure. Um, you know, I'm I'm very impressed with what you know is offered upstream from here in terms of storage. Uh, and, and the opportunity uh, to uh, hold that water back and manage that appropriately, well, not only upstream from here, but also downstream. It, it's, a, it's a pretty 
a fascinating system. Um, and I think the communication between agencies, uh, whether it's irrigation districts, whether it's Bureau of Reclamation, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, I, I think we want to make sure that there's good communication there. I don't want uh, regulations to stand in the way, and I'm, I'm always concerned about that. Uh, we know that uh, we utilize our, our natural resources pretty well, especially when it comes to uh, our irrigation system. Uh, that uh, it's not just for irrigation, but it's for flood control as well. And I'm, I'm glad that we have these opportunities uh, to, to control the, the flows. And even with some high water right now, I, I think uh, it's a time, though, to reflect on the fact that uh, managing these flows does make for a safer community. Yeah. North Platte NRD has stepped up and uh, paying the irrigation districts to put water in the canals, so that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and having those options, yeah, uh, you know, it, it's not like they're brand new. And I'm glad that uh, some folks long before any of us uh, were around had, had the vision and the foresight had to put in this system. And, uh, you know, I mean, Scottsbluff County is roughly 40,000 population, and without our irrigation system, it w- wouldn't be a fraction of that. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that uh, we, can in, we can enjoy a quality of life here uh, with the manageable flows of water uh, flowing through our community. And and uh, I'm always anxious to see um, basically uh, our whole community and our economy uh, celebrate what we do have. All right. You have some legislation in and uh, regarding Obamacare and uh, some of these co-ops that have collapsed. Another new one has collapsed now. We've had uh, the issues with the one here in Nebraska and now another one in Ohio. And, and there's been several of these... Uh, uh, cooperatives uh, that are part of Obamacare that have kind of gone by the wayside. Right. Well, <clears throat> we have we started out with 23 Obamacare co-ops around the country. Uh, ours with Iowa, the Iowa Nebraska Cooperative Health was the first one to collapse and, and left 100, I think 120,000 Nebraskans and Iowans without coverage. The latest one to collapse now is Ohio, leaving 22,000 uh, Ohioans uh, without coverage. Um, uh, there are 10 others that have also collapsed. So well over half of the Obamacare co-ops have collapsed. And so my, my bill would exempt these individuals who lost their coverage through no fault of their own. Uh, they would be exempt uh, from the penalties imposed by the IRS. Uh, we know that Obamacare is, enfor- is enforced and implemented through our tax code, which I think is a bad way to do it. But uh, that's what the Democrats decided to do. And so we're having to deal with that. Um, so my bill would exempt uh, these folks, and I mean, why penalize someone uh, for for something that uh, they wouldn't choose? I mean, in fact, they were just trying to do the right thing, and here their their plan collapsed. Uh, but it certainly reminds me of uh, 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 <clears throat> the local resident here, who, who now has lost her coverage three times uh, due to Obamacare, and and part of this is from the the co-op uh, collapse, and it, what's most unfortunate about that is that she originally had a plan that she liked, that she could afford, that covered her pre-existing condition, and the president said she could keep that plan if she liked it, you know, knowing that that, that wasn't going to be the case. So um, we've got a lot of work to do on this, and not just my bill. And My, my bill is a fairly simple uh, approach to solving a problem that's out there. Uh, but when we're talking about increased co-pays, increased premiums, um, and I— I think uh, that there's double counting with uh, the number of people that the Obama administration claims to be covered now. Uh, I'd I'd like to know how many times, uh, for example, uh, the lady I just mentioned, how many times was she counted when when she's signed up these three times but lost her coverage. Uh, So uh, I'm I'm just anxious uh, for a new administration. Uh, I'm, I'm glad there are term limits for president, believe me. Uh, so that we can start uh, start fresh, uh, come January, and and get to get to the bottom of these problems, and and I think it's going to require a major uh, effort to to step back and, and evaluate the the system. I mean, you will see uh, proposals and alternatives being uh, proposed uh, here just in the next uh, few weeks, I believe, uh, whether it's taxes, whether it's health care, uh, to help. Uh, I think, uh, generate some useful and productive discussion uh, with with the coming presidential campaign and election. All right. Um, do you think no matter who the president is, 
in January that we can fix some of the things that are wrong with Obamacare and, and start moving in the in the right direction? Well, what, what's a very ironic to me is there is consensus that there are major problems with Obamacare. But even the advocates of Obamacare are not proposing solutions or, or fixes to the problems that exist. It, it's very interesting. Now, Republicans are always accused of, of uh, attempting to repeal the whole thing. Now, sometimes that is true. But many times uh, we have simply, uh, I, I remember back to when we wanted to codify, you know, have Congress decide, not just the administration, but have Congress decide that uh, the the portion of Obamacare that the administration was not enforcing, the employer mandate specifically, when they weren't uh, enforcing that, that was just an executive decision, even though the law said otherwise. So that that's part of the, the big rub uh, right now is that the administration is doing things without the authorization of Congress. It undermines the rule of law. It undermines the very structure of our system that our founders set up long ago. And, and I mean, we can disagree on issues and, and even existing law or proposed bills and, and so forth. But once it's voted on and it's there, it needs to be enforced and not on a selective basis, certainly not on a politically selective basis as I think uh, our current president has been operating. Okay. Um, with Memorial Day coming up, any any words about uh, the importance of this holiday? Absolutely. It, it's a great time to reflect. I, I remember uh, my grandpa, uh, a World War II veteran, I would go to the cemetery with him uh, every Memorial Day, and I, I miss those days, certainly, uh, but it allowed me an opportunity to celebrate with him uh, the, the veteran that, that he was, but uh, also to uh, reflect on those folks who, who didn't make it home uh, originally, or those who did make it home and have served in our community in, in other ways and, and have now passed, uh, passed away, uh, but also to uh, honor our, our current uh, veterans who are here um, uh, with us, and hopefully we can celebrate by thanking them and uh, looking to the future and with, uh, with more gratitude every day. Oh. But while and while we're talking about some of this stuff and and the veterans, the Black Hills comment period for that those changes got extended again to I think what was it the middle of June or the end of June something like that. Right. Um, how soon are, are we eventually? Do you, have you talked to folks? Are we ever going to really have a decision on this? And is it possible that it could actually be something that the veterans would would actually favor? Well, it's hard to say at this point. I'm glad that the comment period was extended. Uh, as you know, there's so much turmoil in the VA. Uh, the secretary now is in hot water because he compared uh, the lines at the VA to Disneyland. Uh, that, that's probably not a, a good analogy, uh, let me just say that. Um, these are serious matters. I, I saw another report this morning where a, a large list of, of veterans, uh, according to veterans' records, were declared dead. Uh, and and so they uh, many of these veterans obviously were not, and but they lost their benefits. We're talking such a gigantic bureaucracy that is standing in the way of care for individuals who who don't deserve to be treated the way the VA is, is treating them. And I realize that we've got some good VA uh, situations around here and in Nebraska, uh, but I, I don't like how. Uh, the situation uh, with, with Hot Springs has been handled. I, I don't think it reflects the needs of the veterans themselves. And so I've been uh, talking to veterans directly, listening to them, voicing their concerns uh, within the VA uh, itself. I mean, in a meeting, it was actually a meeting not necessarily for Hot Springs uh, with the secretary uh, some time back. Uh, he said, we, we need to recruit, the VA needs to recruit providers to rural areas and so I specifically said, do you mean like Hot Springs, South Dakota? He, he wasn't expecting that from me, but uh, I did bring that to his attention. And so they know some of the challenges that are out there, and I hope that uh, we can work together uh, to resolve these challenges that are there. Uh, and and in the shortage of providers in rural areas is just one problem, but it's the bureaucracy. You know, I, I fear that providers avoid bureaucracies. Why do they want to practice medicine in, in a, an arena where there's so much paperwork and, and so many boxes to check rather than uh, utilizing 
uh, their expertise uh, to to its fullest in caring for patients and especially those veterans who have served us. Okay, very good. All right, thanks. Thank Appreciate you. it.